Hey everybody, welcome back to Inside oh, Gaming Daily for Wednesday. Let's all join in one uniting ah! thrust as the geopolitical state of our world crumbles and we continue to cover only the most important news. Video games, the most important thing we have. It is no secret that the Xbox One lost to this generation. Pretty handily to the PlayStation 4. It's not like we've talked about it approximately one million other times. A million videos! A million videos! What is this, Monday? That's for the inside gaming heads. Yeah, and the PlayStation 4 was a beast and an all-time bestseller. Sony said at CES recently that they've sold 106 million PS4s. 106 million! As well as more than 1.1 billion games for the system. You want this one? Meanwhile, Microsoft hasn't really released sales numbers for Xbox One in a while, but it's estimated that it probably sold about, are you ready for it? Half that. Ooh. Microsoft's like that guy who seems hot because he's strong and silent and mysterious, but he's actually just kind of dumb. Hey, Don't hey. worry, Jason Momoa, we've all been there. Oh, <laughs> I thought you were talking about me. But these <laughs> records are about to be wiped clean this holiday season when the next generation kicks off and both companies release their new consoles, the PlayStation 5 and the mm. Xbox Series. X. Yeah, it's another next-gen console story. Sorry about that, but don't worry, once Cyberpunk comes out, you'll never hear about anything else ever again. <laughs> Zach, what's going on this generation? See, this time, Microsoft's finally got an ace up their sleeve. Uh, you may know it as the Xbox Game Pass. Ever heard of it? So, Xbox Game Pass for the uninitiated or the dumb uh, is a subscription service that gives you access to more than 350 games, and it's been one of the best reasons to own an Xbox One uh, up until now. Yeah, over the last year or so, Microsoft has beefed up Game Pass, putting Ooh. new releases like Crack down 3, Outer Worlds, and Gears 5 on the service immediately when they come out, which Ooh. is a great value for subscribers, a especially, uh, this is a great mitzvah, thank you, Phil, especially considering what else is on the subscription service market right now. It's a big thing for him. It is also on PC, which means that it's platform agnostic. You like that corporate term? Yeah. We're all CEOs now. <laughs> Sony doesn't have anything like Game Pass to offer on the PlayStation 5, which means that maybe Game Pass could turn the tide this next generation. Zach? Wait, what? PlayStation Now? Yeah, PlayStation Now is kind of their equivalent, but it's not really equivalent in quality. Oh, okay. Try to play Lost Planet 2 through PlayStation Now. Don't no. don't recommend it. People have talked about a Netflix for games for a while now. Some people even thought that Google Stadia would offer that kind of service. <laughs> Can't imagine why. Uh, but Game Pass has really delivered on that idea thanks to the gamer's hero, uh, Xbox boss. Phil Spencer, uh, we, we salute thee. Yep. From um, one first responder to another, <laughs> Phil. <laughs> Lowercase f and r. <laughs> well, ah. oh. The Washington Post ran an article recently talking Wapo. about Wapo. Yeah, uh, ran an article recently talking about how good Game Pass, Gapo. how good Gapo has uh, gotten, <laughs> saying that it's got an impressive selection of games. It does. Not gonna that's, lie. That's the show. They talked to Ben Decker, Microsoft. Cool name. Yeah, that's a cool name. Ben Decker. <laughs> they brought him out of retirement. <laughs> Read you for one last a loose service. Loose cannon cop on the edge who doesn't play by the rules. He said guns. I don't need any <laughs> guns. And he just he pulled a knife out of his. He throws a halo disc. <gasps> they talked to Ben Decker, Microsoft's head of gaming services, who said that people end up playing 40% more games after they get Game Pass. And some smaller indie games see their user base go up by as much as 30 times. Yeah, it is definitely good for indie games. There's a lot of games on there that I'm like, eh, I don't know. If I need to buy this, and then I see it for free, and it's like, oh, this is a great game. That is really good for Microsoft because it means more and more people are playing more games on their platform. Brian just asked if we're calling him today because he already forgot. <laughs> What's D old Decker been saying? He said that they're definitely carrying Game Pass into the next generation, so that uh, it's not an experiment on the current generation of consoles. This is a service that our members can count on being on whatever products we introduce in the future. But with a service like Game Pass, Gapa, you've got to obviously keep it stocked with new games. And as we all know, game development takes a long time. Years, even. So what the hell is Microsoft doing on that front? Well, over the last few years, they've been buying up studios like crazy. That's included respected developers like Ninja Theory, Double Fine, Obsidian, and In Exile. And almost all of them have either just released games or they have stuff coming out in 2020. Ooh, Ooh yeah. Obsidian just released Outer Worlds, sort of a spiritual successor Ooh. to the Fallout <laughs> games. Ooh, a ghoulish <laughs> successor. Obsidian just released Outer Worlds. <laughs> An absolutely spooky. Todd Howard! <laughs> yeah, and they're working on a new survival game called Grounded that's coming out this spring. Ninja Theory has a multiplayer combat game called Bleeding Edge that's scheduled mm. to release in March. I it's imagine really. it's based on the Thomas Pynchon book, right? There's a lot of crossover between Pynchon novels and gaming I actually, gamers. I kind of am above Pynchon intellectually. Okay, Where are you, who are you at? Reading the Bible. 
Oh. <laughs> Written by my main man, G-D. In Exiles, working on the RPG Wasteland 3, that's set to oh. come out in May. Uh, we know that Double Fine has been working on Psychonauts 2 for a while now. Yeah, maybe that releases this year, maybe? I think I just heard James uh, vibrate in excitement from across the building. He's uh. in the walls. <laughs> and of course, 343 is working on what, Zach? Halo Infinite! Hey. Wow! Yeah. That's coming out this holiday season of this year. It's probably a safe bet that it's going to be a launch game with the Xbox Series X. Oh, and also don't forget that Microsoft owns Mojang too. Mojang? Mahjong? I always thought Mojang Mahjong? was like, I was like saying Mojang was like saying Porsche. It's a like Porsche. All right, anyways, so don't forget that Microsoft also owns that company that makes Minecraft. In addition to updating the base game, they're also working on a dungeon crawler named Minecraft Dungeons. That's due out in April. Uh, yeah, give me all that Minecraft, please. That sweet Minecraft. Fill me up with Minecraft. Murder me and then bring me back to life with more Minecraft. Put it in all my holes! <laughs> <laughs> it has to. So they've got a lot of stuff in the pipeline, which is good if you know pipes. Uh, exclusives by <laughs> <You know, sorry. laughs> <Okay. laughs> the pipes. This Depends year. on the viscosity. Of what's uh, we're talking yeah. PVC, <laughs> wood, copper. <laughs> These guys know pipes. Threaded. Uh, no. Exclusives were a real killer for the Xbox One this generation, and it's pretty clear that Microsoft isn't going to make that mistake again. Mm -hmm. You can't come to an exclusives battle with Sony armed with a butter knife. They'll blow up your entire f***ing life with an atomic bomb of cool games! And days gone. Hello again, geopolitical <laughs> dread. Please go away. We're talking about games. I'm, I'm trying to game right now. I'm trying to I'm trying to play Days Gone. I can't be drafted. I'm plugging in. Connor, I, I do have bad news for you, though. You, you are a draftable age. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. You guys can't bring honor to your families. That's true. And you, you can, can bet, bet that all of these future exclusives are going to come out on Game Pass. That brings up another issue. Some people are wondering if Game Pass is sustainable in the long run. Because if you are constantly putting out new games in your subscription service instead of charging 60 bucks for them, is that a model that can last over the long haul? It's a fair question to ask because sometimes businesses will do things that lose money in the short term, look at pretty much every single tech startup, in order to gain market share. And then they'll jack up the price once they've got their nice little captive audience. So what's the future for Game Pass. Well, Spencer himself uh, already actually addressed this in an interview with Stiviver, our benevolent gamer overlord, who I've got to say is super hot. Spencer, not Stiviver, to, super. Be, to be clear. Hot. Yeah. Not that Stiviver isn't hot. Uh, sorry, anyway. Every, everyone's hot. Okay, chill. Now, Spencer didn't really give us subscriber numbers for the service. Uh, it's a classic Microsoft move <laughs> if you, you love to see it, but uh, that's oh, Mike. A, yeah, but that said, Game Pass is a. <laughs> God damn it. Mike, boys! <laughs> let me get through the goddamn news! Zach, you were saying? Happy place. Oh. Yeah, it's Whenever you're ready. <laughs> All right, anyways, yeah, Spencer didn't really give a subscriber number. That's a pretty Microsoft move. You love to see it. But I uh, said the Game Pass is a good business that's more than doubled in size year over year. Mm. That's not the only thing of Phil's that's doubled in size year over year. Am I right? Oh, we're talking about hogs? Are we? Yeah. That's you guys should see a doctor. Yeah, he also said they aren't going to dramatically increase the price of Game Pass in the future to fund all these games. Spencer said, quote, I know some people say, oh, they're just kind of burning money left and right in order to gain customers so they can trick you into raising the price later. There's no model like that for us. We feel good in the business that we're running now. We're definitely investing in it, but not investing in a way that's unsustainable. So the headline is, Microsoft not burning money in a barrel. Good news. Oh. So to hear Spencer tell it, Game Pass is a good business for them and it's viable in the long term. Again, they're not sharing numbers, which is especially funny on the tale of Sony rightfully bragging about their enormous success this generation with lots of millions and billions. Oh, we get it, Sony, you have a big ol' hogger. Stop embarrassing Microsoft. Whoa, micro soft. Oh. That's good news for Xbox players who have been enjoying the service, and like we said, for Microsoft. This is something that can set them apart from Sony when the next generation starts later this year. At the end of the day, I mean, Xbox Series X and PS5 are both pretty similar consoles. You both plug them into your TV and play games on the couch. I mean, like, each of them need to make an argument to the consumer as to why their console is better. I yeah. mean, with the PS4, it's all about exclusives. Sony had The Last of Us, Spider-Man, Horizon Zero Dawn, God of War, Uncharted, Bloodborne, to name a few. It was a lineup that the Xbox One just honestly couldn't match. So this time around, Microsoft might make the argument that the Xbox Series X has a value that the PlayStation 5 just can't match. For 10 bucks a month, you can access this huge library of games immediately. Sony's probably going to go for more exclusives once again. We've seen signs of that after they bought Insomniac Games, who is probably hard at work on Spider-Man 2 right now. Yeah, exclusives worked for Sony this generation, and they might work again. Oh. With stuff like The Last of Us 2, where? In the pipeline! The PlayStation um. 4 was a massive success and it's doubtful that Sony is in a rush to do anything majorly different from the PlayStation 5. Just look at the logo.
They could just release sequels to this generation's games, exclusives, and they would probably have another hit on their they hands. They could do that for two generations. Honestly, yes. With how long could. it's taken The Last of Us to come out? But while exclusives matter, Game Pass has shown that people will pay yet another monthly fee for a big library of games. People like value, especially gamers. You know a gamer's always trying to, out there trying to save a buck, cutting coops. <laughs> we are gamers, as we all identify as, first and foremost. Uh, it goes gamer, uh, first responder, journalist. Joker. Uh, Joker. <laughs> <laughs> here. <laughs> Damage. But it's sneaky because it's not really price conscious because I'm the kind of person that will just let the subscription roll over and over and yeah, over no, again. We're dumb. I mean, it's all about like, do they have the games to sustain this? It's like, well, I think we're underestimating just how dumb I am. Well, and everyone here <laughs> and at Inside people... Gaming is still very reliant on mommy and daddy. <laughs> putting that money in our account to buy us new consoles. There's talk of cutting games, off my so. allowance, which I'm going to have to have a word with them. I was just on the phone with Daddy this morning, <laughs> asking... I said, Papa. <laughs> I came running in in my nightgown and my nightcap. Warm Mama. milk spilling everywhere. Mama, Papa, I don't want a Vita. You should have seen the fit I threw when Mama and Papa bought me a Stadia for Christmas this year. <laughs> Papa, I need a new Chromecast Ultra because I'm also a psychopath and shoved it down the throat of the head. Papa, there's no HDMI in our home theater. This <laughs> It's composite! <laughs> you idiot! You fool! And then I slapped him on the mouth. And then I became him. I'm 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 just watching this in awe. Please, please go ahead and read that last line. <laughs> Why don't you? Might even be enough to tip the scales in Microsoft's favor next time around. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we did it! Yes! <laughs> Brian prefers console to PC. Oh! oh. oh! So Sony finally oh. busted out the big guns last night at CES. Brian, what did they reveal for us? A logo. A logo. A very, very predictable logo. Okay. Did it involve a, a, a P, an S, and a five? Did. Wow. They must have really broke the bank on that one. <laughs> Seriously, someone got paid.